in the previous class we have learnt about the heating effect of electric current today we will learn the practical application of heating effects of electric current heating effect of electric current are used in three cases It is used in heaters, geysers, electric iron. It is etc. Secondly, it is used for the production of light. Heating effect of electric current is also used in the filament bulbs for the production of light. When the electric current is supplied through a filament bulb, first the filament becomes red hot, then it produces a lot of heat as well as light, where the energy consumed in heat produce, production is more than 90% and the energy consumed for the light production in the filament bulb is less than 10%. The third point is it is also used in fuse Is also used in fuses in, in electric boards in our homes. When the potential difference increases, the electric supply also increases in our homes. At that time, the heat is produced in the fuse and because its melting point is already determined by the different engineers during its production, it melts and it protects the whole circuit of our homes, the different appliances that are used by the electric current and sometimes fuse also saves our lives in our homes. So heating effect of electric current or in other words we can say that the Joule's law of heating is used in three conditions. The first one is Joule's law of heating is used in the heaters, geysers, electric iron, etc. It is also used in the filament bulb for the production of production of light. And the third point is, it is also used in the fuses in electric boards in our homes for the safety of for the safety electric 
appliances our lives students the next topic is electric power electric power the rate at which electric energy is consumed or dissipated is called electric electric power in the previous section when we were studying about the heating effect of electric current we have already derived the formula for the power that is p is equal to vi it means electric power electric power is equal to potential difference potential difference multiplied by the amount of electric current electric current here the si unit of power is the si unit of power is watt the si unit of potential difference is volt and the si unit of electric current is ampere applying these all si units in this formula we will get watt is equal to potential difference si unit volt a for ampere si unit of electric current applying one on both side from here we can get the definition of one watt one watt what is the definition of one watt we can learn from this formula one watt is equal to one volt one ampere one watt is the power of a device one watt is the electric power of a device when one ampere of electric current flows through it at a potential difference 
of one volt. One watt. Dear student, one watt is the electric power of a device when one ampere of electric current flows through it at a potential difference of one volt. It's, now we will discuss over the formula of electric power that is P is equal to Vi. This is the formula for the power of a device. Electric power, I can say we can say this electric power. This formula can be changed because we have already learned Ohm, in Ohm's law, V is equal to I R. In Ohm's law, we have already learned V is equal to I R. From here, we can get, we can apply the value of V in this formula. Then what will be? There, V is equal to I R. I R I because V is equal to I R from Ohm's law. From Ohm's law. Now it will be changed into I square R. So please listen carefully. P is equal to Vi is the first formula for electric power. P is equal to I square R is the second formula for electric power. Now, come again here. Therefore, I is equal to V by R. If we are going to apply the value of I from this formula into this formula, then we will get V square by R square into R. This R will cancel one R from there and its value will be V square by R. This is the third formula for electric power. In other words, we can say that power, electric power is equal to V I is equal to I square R is equal to V square by R. We can use any portion of this formula in solving the numerical problems of our chapter. Means P is equal to V I can be used. P is equal to I square R can be also used. And P is equal to V square by R. It can also be used in different cases when we will solve the numerical problems. Today, I would like to conclude the class. On the next class, we will view the whole chapter carefully and all formula, all SI units and its symbols will be written by me. So, it is very much important for you all to listen me and to watch on your YouTube channels of our school, Santaniket Najubli School, carefully. Because it will give you the whole material of the whole chapter on the next day. Thank you. Thanks.